In this tutorial series, I'm going to be recreating the NES Classic Ivan Iron Man Stewart's Super Off-Road Game. I'm going to be creating it in Construct 3. There's a link in the description if you don't already have that. There is a free version, but uh, for this game, I'm going to be using a lot of different uh, event lines. So it probably will run over the limitation you get with the free version. So if you're going to follow along, you can start, but by the time we finish the game, we may have gone over the limits. So you may need the paid version. I'm not going to be making it exactly the same. Um, I'm going to be making it as a mini game for a larger game that I'm building called Orion's Throne, which is a top-down RPG meaningful choice game. The game that I'm making here will be one of the mini games that you can play on one of the computer terminals in the level. So if you haven't already checked that out, uh, there are links in the description. It's called Orion's Throne. The name is a working title. It may be changed. We don't know at this point, but this will be one of the games you'll be able to play in that series. So if you're interested in learning how to make a top-down style racing game um, that has a few different features, then uh, follow along and we will get started right now. I'm Zandalwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. You go new project, leave everything default, 320 by 180. Um, you can set that to landscape orientation with a vent sheet, call it whatever you want, leave it at retro style, optimize it for pixel art and hit create. So you can ignore all of this stuff over here in the project window. This is just the RPG game that I'm currently building. I'm going to create new subfolders for everything um, that we're going to be making for this game. So you can make it as a standalone game. I am going to be keeping the graphics very, very simple because that's the style that I'm going for. Um, but in terms of the events and the coding, you'll be able to follow along just fine and you can change your graphics if you need to. So I'm going to add a new subfolder to keep this game in. I'm going to call it Off-Road just for you know lack of a, a better name and I'm going to add a layout uh, in fact yeah I'm going to add a layout uh, and I'm going to add an event sheet this one is going to be called off-road game because that's the game layout and then in the event sheets You'll see it's come down here and given me an event sheet two. Yours will probably just say event sheet one. I'm just going to call this off road events. And like I did before, I'm going to make a subfolder and just call it off road. Then I can drag the event sheet in there so it's nice and organized. I can open up the event sheet and I'm just going to go ahead and close all these other ones so it's not confusing. These are all just event sheets that are linked to my other game. You don't need to worry about that. The only thing you'll have now um, is the off-road uh, layout and the off-road event sheet. And that's all we're going to need to build this game. Okay, perfect. Over on the layers tab here, I'm going to go ahead and set my background color to black. And I'm going to go ahead and set the size of the layout to be the size of the viewport, which is 320 by 180. Um, and also, I don't think I mentioned before because I just opened up my game. If you were to open up a new uh, a new file for this, I'll just show you how to do that. You go new project, leave everything default, 320 by 180. Um, you can set that to landscape orientation with a vent sheet, call it whatever you want, leave it at retro style, optimize it for pixel art and hit create. And then that will bring you to this. Then we've resized the layout to the size of the viewport, which is 320 by 180 and made the background black. And I'm gonna rename this layer background. Then right click, add a layer to the top. Right, now we need to create the player. So we're gonna double click. I'm gonna create a sprite. I'm gonna resize it to 16 by 16. And the style that I'm going for is just gonna be one bit. It's just gonna be black and white with different kind of variations of shade, but very, very subtly. So I'm gonna be drawing very, very simple artwork. You can put in whatever artwork you want. If you've got an asset uh, pack, you can just use a car 
Um, you can put in whatever you want, just keep it 16 by 16 so it all fits in terms of the dimensions. There, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to flip it. I'm going to duplicate it again. And this one's going to be going upwards. There. Up and then duplicate that and then flip it around but it needs to be lined up with the bottom there so now we can go right we can turn up go back left go back down we'll call that states and set the speed to zero so it doesn't play through now that will just sit at frame one and then we can drive around this map. Right, let's change the name of this to car. And we need to give it a behavior. I'm gonna give it the car behavior. So now we can drive this thing around using the arrow keys. Oh, and I've drawn, I've driven off the map. Um, we need to set the initial frame to 1 because pushing up makes it go right. Better. However, we need to now understand what direction we are facing. So the way we do that is by giving it an instance variable called direction. And this will be a string and then the initial value will be right. So now if we go to the event sheet, we can add an event and we can tell the car, again, ignore all these other folders, you won't have these, these are just part of my other game, but we can now tell the car to change its, uh, its direction based on which direction we're traveling. So I'm gonna say car, oh sorry, I'm gonna say, um, in fact, I'm gonna go to inputs, you won't have this, but you'll need to add the keyboard and the way to do that is to double click and add it in here. It'll be under inputs and you just double click it, you add it into your game. Once you've done that, you can add an event and go inputs or not inputs. You won't have that folder. It's just going to show up in here. Double click on the keyboard and say if key is down and then we're going to use the WASD key. So we're going to say W. Then I want to copy that and paste it three more times. I want to change each of these to the A, S and D keys. So now we've got an event that's for when we're pushing down W, A, S and D. So when we're pushing W we want to be moving forward. So we're going to go into the car and we're going to say simulate control accelerate. Then we can copy this and drag it down again three more times. When we're pushing A, we want to steer left. When we're pushing S, we want to brake. And when we're pushing D, we want to steer right. Now we also need to change the frame of the car. So if we're, if we're pushing up and we're accelerating, I've changed my mind. Go back, get rid of the car behavior. I think it's going to work better if we give it the eight directions because we're not it's not a typical car racing game we need to change the sprites direction so when we go back to the event sheet when W is pressed we can still go into the car and we can simulate control and we're going to move up 
and then drag that out three more times. When A is down, go left. When S is down, go down. And when D is down, go right. Now we can change the sprite. So we can go into the car and we can set the frame. So if we're pushing W, we're moving up. We need to set the frame to frame two. I think it's frame two. Let me just check. Frame two is up, frame three is down. Yeah. Copy that out. When we're pushing A, we're moving left. So we want to set it to frame one. Uh, sorry, frame zero. When we're moving right, we set it to frame one. And then when we're moving down, we set it to frame three. Uh, move left, move right. Why is it flipping? Make sure the origin point. Okay, the origin point's in the middle. Make sure the origin point is center bottom on every single frame. And it's still flipping around, facing all kinds of directions. Have I got... That's right, when I push D, when I push A, it's not doing what I want it to do. When I push A, I need it to be at frame zero. Which it is. And when I push S, I want it to be at frame three, which it is as well. Set the origin point to the back of the car here on every single one. I think that might be. Okay, it's because we've got set angle. We need it to be no. And we only need it four directions because we're moving up, down, left and right. So now we can drive around. Although I kind of feel that we need those diagonals. Because when you push down two, it, it messes up. So let's add those diagonal movements in with a new sprite. So first thing, let's double click. Let's add some more frames. So this one's going to be diagonal down to the left. Okay, now we can simply just Duplicate that and we can rotate it round. Duplicate, rotate it round, duplicate, and rotate it round. So now we've got four, five, six, and seven starting in the diagonal down to the left. So now we need to go back and give this one, instead of four directions, we need to give it eight directions. And now we need to tell the system what to do if two of those keys are down. So we can add an event and we can go back to our keyboard and say if key is down, key, let's start with the down to the left, so it'll be A. But we also need to know if another key is down at the same time. So we're gonna push C to add a condition. And we go back to the keyboard, we say is down and we say key S. So if A and S are both down, then we need to simulate a direction, which will be left. And we also need to simulate a direction, which is down. And we need to set the frame to four. So now we should be able to travel diagonally down. That's better. Although we're still going too fast. Let's bring the speed down to this thing. Um, let's head over here, let's bring it down to 100. Perfect. Although I think we can get away with not having in these directions because by default, it's gonna, rec it's gonna recognize the WASD anyway. Yeah, so we don't need to worry about it. We just need to change the frame. So let's do that for the other three. Copy that out. This time we're gonna go up to the left so we can change the S to a W and we change the frame to five. 
then we need to go top right so it'll be D and W and then that's frame 6 and then we need to change the W to an S for bottom right and change that frame to frame 7. So now we've got all the controls in we can now move our car around the level. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. In the next episode, we're gonna start building the level and we're gonna add in some collisions so that this thing can move around. Um, then we'll add some other drivers that will be racing against us. We'll add in some variables that will track our score. We'll add some pickups that will allow us to do speed boosts or use turbos or the nitros or what it was in the off-road game. Um, we'll add in a few different levels, uh, maybe a timer. So uh, there's, a, there's a few things we'll do, but uh, I'm going to leave it right there for now and I'll see you in the next one.